This programme is brought to you by UCKG. And welcome to another fabulous episode of A Different Kind of Woman. A Different Kind of Woman is a woman who reinvents herself. On today's show, The Changing Face of Women, we'll be looking at how the portrayal of women has changed and how it needs to change. Are women portrayed as sex objects or victims? Or are we empowered? Let's take a look at what's coming up next on the show. Next, we're going to find out what people on the streets of London think. As a, um, as a wife, you can be whatever you want to be. See us developing our portrayal of ourselves in presenter training. So I think it's like peaceful as a sheep or something like that. We'll be joined by singer-songwriter Linda Muriel. When you look at television now, it's not about the singing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not about, it's about the way you look. Right. Mm -hmm. It's about the way you dress. And later, we'll get style tips from Jessica Ann. Personal style is about being unique and expressing the person you are. Joining me today to discuss the changing face of women is the strong Sandra. Hello, wow, strong. <laughs> I'm going to say the remarkable Raquel. Thank you, thank you. And the just right Gemma. I try to be right Gemma, today. Gemma, Gemma right. gets all the interesting adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies, how realistic, I mean, today we're discussing the portrayal of women in media. How mm -hmm. realistic do you think is the portrayal of women in the media today? Well, I think, um, I think unfortunately it's becoming more realistic because it's one of those things where women are portrayed in a certain way and because the media has such a powerful influence over young women and women coming up, you know, and we, we were surrounded by it. it's billboards, posters, TV, that people are starting to make themselves be like the characters they see. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, in this day and age, it is becoming more realistic. So you're saying that it's realistic because it's shaping women to kind of match what is being portrayed. Exactly. So they're being, they're kind of being the trendsetter. Right. And women are following. Exactly. So in that way, it is realistic. Yeah. Yeah. How, do, how, how about you? Yeah. Do you think it's realistic? I really do. And I really think like day by day, year by year, it's becoming more and more realistic because this is what the young girls especially are seeing. So they think this is the reality. Mm -hmm. But in actual fact, it's not, and it's not a good reality. So it's really unfortunate that it's becoming realistic and it's something that I really don't agree yeah, with. I, I, for me, when I think about it, um, in terms of it being realistic, I think of how it fits me yeah. and how it, how it kind of relates to who I am as a woman. Mm -hmm. And in that way, for me, it is not realistic because I don't identify with what I see and I don't identify with how women are portrayed. But I get what you're saying. Yeah. I'm not the majority. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was gonna say as well one very important point she mentions concerning children. You know, mm -hmm. I I I'm part of a group who work with young girls, yes. and we can see this in a very strong way in their lives. You know, their hairstyle, mm -hmm. their behavior, the way they they take pictures. Everything is falling. You know. Um, someone they see on TV, mm -hmm. a famous, mm -hmm. you know, artist or singer or something like that. So I believe maybe not for the more mature women mm -hmm. in a so strong way, but for the young ones, I think is very, very strong. Mm -hmm. And I would say for me, that's, that's a bit of a shame. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, Anna Maria went, hit the streets of London to find out what people think. So let's find out what people on the streets of London think. How has the media's portrayal of women changed in your lifetime? Everywhere you see more, um, figure, you see more female and females in authority, um, in CEO positions, and they're the ones asking the questions. Um, and you know, just 
in films and TV, anywhere you look, it's not just as a mom, as a um, as a wife, you can be whatever you want to be. Uh, well, I grew up in America, so the media's portrayal of women has significantly gotten better, but at the same time, there's still a lot of emphasis on uh, what women have done wrong instead of taking, the, like, using themselves as uh, being a victim when uh, the accused person often still gets away free and all the, um, it all gets put back on the woman and it's like the woman's fault. So that, that still really hasn't changed very much. Um, I think there's more of a focus on um, overnight celebrities, so that, which is a bit, to me, is a bit disappointing. So you see people from Big Brother become more kind of icons for, for young women particularly. And that's what I see more of. I, I'd, well, I grew up in the 80s, uh, so there was still quite a lot of uh, stigma on powerful women. I think they've become more accepted powerfully, but I still think there's a lot more growth to be had in terms of pay. The idea of what women have to be has maybe got worse, as in you have to be perfect, you have to look perfect, you have to dress perfect, you have to have a perfect body. Maybe that idea is what I mean of the portrayal of women being perfect has probably got worse and that's not reality. Who do you currently think is a good role model? Who I wouldn't say role models because I think women now can aspire to be anything. They don't need to just look to one woman. Um, but for me, I really look to women like Stella McCartney who are paving the way for um, women to be um, environmentalist or Vivian Westwood. Um, Tamsin Blanchard, who um, is a journalist, but also um, she questions um, fashions and sustainability. Um, it's not just acceptable for a woman to be pretty um, and to wear nice clothing, but to ask where that clothing is coming from and um, who's making the clothing. Good role models to me are people who kind of come through the system. When I look at people like Michelle Obama, who's worked really hard to get where they have, I think they're very positive role models for women. Well, uh, Elizabeth Warren uh, is a senator and uh, in the United States, and she has similar goals to uh, Bernie Sanders, but with the emphasis of being a woman and dealing with reproduction, reproduction rights and everything else, because unlike here, uh, you know, it's like uh, you still have um, people protesting at anti-abortion facilities and that sort of that sort of thing. So um, <clears throat> that is really more of a powerful issue in America that women have and continue to have the right to choice. Well, Angelina Jolie. Uh, for what reason would you consider her a good role model? She puts a lot of her time and effort into humanitarian efforts. Um, she's. She doesn't use her sexuality, I'd say, anymore as much to promote the things that she wants to do. It's more about her beyond that. So, yeah. I think um, Malala Yousafzai is probably a good role model because everything that she's been through and what she's fighting for in terms of girls' right to go to school and things, I think she's a good role model for girls and women. Well, the people on the streets of London sure had a lot to say. <laughs> but, but you know what? One of them mentioned something that's kind of um, a trend nowadays, which is reality TV, right? Mm -hmm. what, what, how, how do you think um, reality TV influences and also portrays women nowadays? Mm -hmm. I was actually... Um, that I was getting my nails done um, long, quite a while ago and there was a show, I won't mention the name of the show, but that show, it, there was women, they were actually walking around naked, all for the sake of fame, sleeping around in the show mm -hmm. with all sorts of men, just for the sake of fame. This show is like, they think it's like their first class mm -hmm. uh, ticket to fame. Mm -hmm. And when I was looking at that, I felt so appalled thinking, is this what, you know, some women are ready to um, go through just so that they can get fame and you know become famous you know reality shows I think is um, for some people it's just a quick way to become more famous and people are willing to do just about anything just to um, I mean I, I'm I, I, I will not say fan but I, I 
watch a lot of reality TV. Mm -hmm. I love studying people. I love seeing dynamics or, or how people work, how mm -hmm. people re relate with each other, and and just kind of um, getting a feel of how people are in general. Mm -hmm and understanding um, women in a different light. But I have to say, for me, you know, they term it reality TV, but I don't know how real it is. Right. Yeah. Because right. yeah. it kind of, you, you watch one and you kind of feel like you've watched them all mm. because women in those t um, TV shows are characterized yeah. all in the same light. Right. So, yeah, go on. Yeah, I think... Um, I think what's unfortunate is kind of what Sandra's saying is that women have been over-sexualized and it's yeah. all about their sexuality yeah. and their body and their looks and their beauty, etc. Something on the video on Street Talk, which I thought was really interesting, yeah. is that they spoke about the presidential election. Yeah. And, you know, at the moment, which is very current, we've got Hillary Clinton who's up and running. But what happens when it's a, a female candidate? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that happened in the O.J. Simpson trial. Instead of focusing on O.J., mm -hmm. it was about his prosecutor, what she's wearing, what yeah. her hair's like, mm -hmm. you know, what her body shape is. Oh, she's gained a bit of weight. And that's what happens in the media. And that's where, where all of this pressure comes from for women to look different, to yeah. look a certain mm -hmm. way. And people who are, you know, getting bum implants and lip implants, that is what makes the press and that is what makes the media a lot of the time the people who have got success in you know maybe a more traditional way or in the right way according to my standards mm -hmm. you know it, it's not good news mm -hmm. so it doesn't mm -hmm. make the press and I think because of all of that people who do want a quick and easy start into rich richness or fame yeah. or success they think you know what this is the shortcut mm -hmm. so let me just use my body let me use my looks let me mm -hmm. sleep around let me yeah. be naked because I can get there really quicker rather than someone who's going to do it mm -hmm. in the old-fashioned way yeah. yeah we're gonna take a look at some ads from the past and see how these ads and the portrayal of women have evolved in advertisement over the years so let's take a look at some of these adverts <laughs> <laughs> wow look at that one <laughs> so what did you think of the, of the first one i mean that's how women used to be portrayed in advertisements before mm -hmm. did you see this kind of like your 50s house housewife uh -huh. kind of stereotype is that still she's adv i think she's advertising yeah uh, yeah i think ketchup it, okay right? so <laughs> yeah too much sauce. You, you know I think it's actually quite derogatory, and I think in this day and age, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. just if you look at the caption, you mean a yeah. woman can open it? Like, yeah. you know, it just yeah. plays to the whole thing of women can't do anything. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. we, we know that we're the weaker vessel, but I think in this day and age, that would not wash because yeah. there would be all sorts of no, things. Like, no, you know, they, they'd be getting a lot of bad press. <laughs> exactly. <from them. laughs> you know, because it's kind of like, you know, it, it also links into what we're talking about. A lot of the time, women are portrayed in this way, like, oh, look at her body rather than her mind. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and it's kind of like, oh, even she can do like yeah. you know, it's a ketchup bottle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> we can open the ketchup yeah, bottle. We can do Thank it. You. We can do it. <laughs> I just, I think as well. I think it was a little bit. Um, in balance back then, just like mm. it is now, women are portrayed yeah. as, oh, you know, being the sex appeal, etc. There as well, it's like they're portrayed yeah. as they can't do it. I mean, yeah. so yeah. We, just, we need yeah. a balance yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, do you yeah, see exactly. how she's kind of <laughs> exactly. looking at it as like, you know? <laughs> I feel embarrassed just to look and how he holds <laughs> her is like well, well, I own the property and then she's got her little cleaning yeah her little cleaning like, yeah, yeah. you're in the house, house. Yeah, yeah just stay there yeah. and you know that is completely fine but I think you know sometimes especially because someone mentioned in the video maybe there's not enough women behind the camera women producers directors and so yeah. on yeah. you know it kind of plays to the whole idea of women your role is to be at home and let the mm -hmm. men be at the forefront yeah. so I think nowadays because our society has changed you know economically women can't afford to stay home it's just so out of date but, but of have that. adverts really changed I mean when you look mm -hmm. at adverts nowadays certainly I think um, the, the styling and the formats of the adverts have evolved but is has our portrayal changed are we now portrayed as strong women that we are or are we still sexualized and portrayed as women who are kind of in, insignificant in society I in think, adverts i think over the years we've um we've lost more clothes because the yeah. adverts back then yeah. we had more clothes yeah. and now the clothes have just lessened yeah <laughs> so i mean i think there's a little bit of you know of that portrayal of me cut a bit just a bit but i still mm -hmm. think 
There should I'm, be a I'm bit more I mean, work. I'm trying to, to remember adverts that are out there. there are yeah. very, we have very few adverts that very portray few. women as strong women, yeah. that portray mm-hmm. women as influential women. Mm-hmm. Most adverts will have a woman, as you said, yeah. now, uh, maybe not opening a ketchup bottle, but opening a toothpaste mm-hmm. yeah. with, l- with little, no, little, little clothes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> little, exactly. Like, so, wearing yeah. a little bit. Um, so I don't think, I know that the styling and, and how the adverts are formatted, obviously, have, has changed in order to reach the audience and to be more relevant to the audience. But I think our portray- portrayal is still to to be questioned. Yeah. We're not portrayed as we should be. I think uh, in those times, women decided to, to prove that they could do much more. And as you said, you know, they start going too much from one side to the other side. Mm-hmm. So I don't believe it's totally wrong for you to learn how to be a housewife, to take care of your house, you know. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, to show that you can do something profitable out there. Mm-hmm. But within time, women just start changing their mentality and believe that to know, to know how to be a housewife is something yeah. totally, you know, out of date. But then they are losing, you know, their essence as well. We're going too much to the other side and not valuing themselves. But when you look at sort of the uh, the objects that we um, uh, we get to advertise or that women are used to advertise, um, washing machines. Yeah. So uh, so I, I think in a sense they still they're still. Um, st- stuck with the housewife uh, kind of role that uh-huh. women normally are domestic housewives and and those are the things that we get to advertise things that like cleaning products you don't mm. see a man advertising a cleaning a, clean, a cleaning product That's right true. you don't see a man advertising a washing machine so these things are still stereotypically um, advertised by women so in a sense I, I believe that we haven't really evolved a lot from how the media used to view women in the past and how the media view women today which is not a bad thing as Haikel was saying it may not be a bad thing because advertisement is kind of targeted at a target audience right yeah. so really it will be more women who go into stores to buy washing mm-hmm. machines yeah. more than men it will be women who kind of you know pay more attention to to um, cleaning products than men because mm-hmm. that's that's generally the role that we adopt as women we love mm-hmm. to kind of take care of what's happening to take care of of our homes and to take we, this is something that is not is not different we're not different in in terms of how women were in the past but i think we as women today have evolved to a different level uh-huh. so and and that different level is still not being shown right mm-hmm. and actually it's being it's been direct de- 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 the word does not come out <laughs> we, we, we it's been de- mean we we, mm-hmm. we 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 still viewed as derogatory objects mm-hmm. i mean now you get things like um you know music videos and all of these things we, we we're talking about adverts now but yeah um music videos and all of these things that feed into the stereotype of women mm-hmm. being just sexual objects and and uh-huh. um, what do you think we can do to kind of um, stand up against that or mm. to kind of bring effective change as women. Mm. Boycott the videos. <laughs> Boycott it all. <laughs> yeah. I think we have such a powerful platform yeah. nowadays through like social media and you know in Britain we love a good old petition you know yeah. and I think you know I think social pressure is what brings about change because as you were talking I actually thought of a famous advert that we have here in the UK mm-hmm. I don't know about other um, I don't know if you remember it Sandra years ago and it's actually a man mm-hmm. going around spraying his kitchen with this famous brand mm-hmm. um, which I won't say which one it is and then his wife comes home and says oh gosh she's home I haven't cleaned the oven and it's so funny mm-hmm. but the truth is it kind of shows how things were starting to change mm-hmm. just because of a lot of social pressure mm-hmm. so I think that the more that we don't give in to these things and become like what we're seeing like I said at the top of the show mm-hmm. and we start to say actually that isn't right that isn't how things are today and we stand up for what we believe in and what our true values should be then that could start to bring about a change will a culture shift overnight no but hopefully in years to come maybe our children's children will start to see something different and mm-hmm. um, so that's something that you know you bring to the table Gemma and we, we as women have to think about we, it, it's not enough to just complain that we're not being yeah. portrayed the way that we want to we have to start putting that pressure and we have to start Mm -hmm. doing something about influencing our surrounding and changing it otherwise we're going to still be complaining a hundred years from now and as you can tell we have a lot to say (laughs) but we have to go (laughs) we have to go for a break so we're going to take a short break and after the break we'll be more we'll be back discussing more of this topic the changing face of women (laughs) 
This programme is brought to you by UCKG. This programme is brought to you by UCKG. Welcome back. Today's topic is the changing face of women. Before the break, we were discussing how the portrayal of women has changed and another depiction of women in the media is as sex objects, as we discussed. Now, on average, across magazines, one or two advertisements that feature women portrays them as sex objects. The sexual victimization of women used to be only in pornography, but it has now found expression not only in films and TV shows, but in advertising as well which is a shame. The exposure of women's bodies occurred four times as often compared to the exposure of men's bodies in magazines. So why do you think this is, ladies? I think also um, some consumers are different, aren't they? Like, you know, women are not as visual as men are. Mm -hmm. So you'll see, like, you know, in a men's magazine, you know, you put a woman who's half naked on there and, you know, it'll probably go like hotcakes. You know, you probably do the same on a women's magazine. Yeah, it can sell, but women aren't as visual. A lot of the time they use text and really sort of, mm -hmm. um, what should I say, interesting captions. to. Cap so I think there is, like we said in the beginning of the show, there is a, a market for it. Yeah, so so it's more to do with the buyer than, than the advert yeah, itself. Yeah, but if there wasn't a demand, then they wouldn't be yeah. selling it, basically. Mm -hmm, true. You know, there is a demand for it. So... And that's why they keep doing it, because if more people were to, to stand up and say, actually, we didn't want this and we refuse to buy it or refuse to watch your programme, it wouldn't be happening. Yeah. yeah, and in many cases, there is no marked difference between pornography and some of the pictures in the tabloids. Anna van Heersvik of Campaign um, Group Object told Leveson Inquiry. Now, during her evidence, she also cited the example of Daily Star Story in 2001 about the singer Charlotte Church, then age 15, with the commentary, she's a big girl now, looking chest swell. A report by Object and three other women's campaign groups surveyed 11 British newspapers over a fortnight in September. It found excessive objectification of women in some parts of the press, reducing them entirely to sexual commodities in a way that would not be broadcast on television nor allowed in the workplace because of equality legislation. Now, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. when, we did, when we were preparing for the show and I would think of the portrayal of women in media, I, would, I mean, I thought of TV shows, I thought of films, I thought of advertisements, but I didn't, you know, kind of give much thought to newspapers. And here we have that newspapers are actually doing a lot worse at portraying women. So what do you think about that, ladies? Mm. I, well, think some of, I think a lot of it is... Um, a lot of British humour, and I talk about Britain because we're here, is based on sex anyway. So mm -hmm. it's, cult, it's partly cultural. Mm -hmm. So, like, look at her chest swell, you know. They thought, oh... And, mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of the time you find that in newspapers that, you know, it's like the, the famous page three that's been going on for years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what people like to see and it's a topless woman mm -hmm. and you know a lot of women will be reading it like you see it on the tube or what have you they'll be reading it and they'll flip past it and then men sometimes you're on the tube next to them and they look mm -hmm. I just think how many like how many topless people yeah. are you going to see and, uh, don't you get tired of it like you know just looking at but it's no. been going on for absolute yeah. years so there is a market for it okay mm -hmm. now uh, but we see that I mean we've just read that in the workplace and also in in the workplace and also in in some of the TV shows, there is kind of some control uh, in the, uh, or towards the yeah. content. So now, shouldn't that extend to newspapers? If, you, if newspapers are this influential and they do portray, you know, not only women, but they do portray people in general, shouldn't the control then extend to newspapers, the control that we have? Yeah, I think, of course, in terms of I believe, yeah, I believe so. And I believe as well, you know, the situation will start changing as we were talking about when the people who buy decide to choose, let's say, better, you know, and then maybe say, no, this is not profitable. You know, uh, my child doesn't need to, to see these. We don't need to, you know, to get interest in a product because the person is half naked. So yeah. I believe also comes from those who are buying it yeah. because they just follow, you know, what we want. How much of 
of this influence is coming from the fact that writers or the people who are making these adverts are men because statistics mm -hmm. show that 78% of front page articles are written by men wow. and 84% of those there quoted or well, mentioned it. are you males. Go. Why, are, why aren't women allowed to be editors in chief? Exactly. Of these That's what we need to ask ourselves. There why aren't go. women getting to the top? Why are they the assistant? Or yeah. why are they the PAs? And why, why aren't they paid this? It's like, this is the whole argument. It's like, the men are at the forefront and they're controlling our media. So we, we are portrayed in this sort of way. And then it's like, oh, okay, well, this is how we are. If I do want to get to the top, I have to either sleep my way to the yeah. top or try. And that's the messages how, that we get. But how, how, much, how much of that is the men's fault though? Well, I mean, like, how much of that is the men's fault? What, 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 what is it that women should be doing that they're not doing to get empowered and to get in these positions of power? So, I mean, great. You know, men are there. Men are taking over. Well, not taking over, but men are, are, are having lead roles and men are having uh, predominant roles. But why are we women not changing it? How much of it is our responsibility? I think there are women that are trying to fight for change and shows like this bring awareness. And you do see that. But, you know, at the end of the day, it takes years for cultures to shift. Yeah. And I think that's that's what it is. I think there will be change, but it takes years. And the more people that succumb to what they see and to try to take the quick route, it just it won't happen. Help. Yeah, and it I just won't happen. It's true. We it will take years, yeah. but if we we, we um, women remain focused and you know they they're adamant to to get you know to be like no we're gonna we're gonna take get there. You take a stand. If we stick to it, then. I believe it can change in the years. But if, for, for example, we start off well and then we see, you know, the ones, oh, it's this woman, more women out there going, showing this, showing that. Mm. It just, yeah. it doesn't help the minority that are yeah. fighting. Mm. Exactly. You know, we need to, the minority needs, needs to become the majority so it can change. But if we keep, if they're not helping us, if women are not working together, we're just not. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that kind of stand against us is this feeling of, hopelessness right yes. hopeless the, 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 this is why i asked the question because normally we feel hopeless and therefore it makes us paralyzed yeah. we stand mm. paralyzed because this is such a big you know big big fight between us we women uh, we're losing this battle and therefore i will do nothing because i'm so hopeless mm. but we need to start making ourselves responsible for the change that we want yes. to happen mm -hmm. so yeah. we can't sort of you know say oh man uh taking over and men should mm. like make a way for us they're not going to make they're way we yeah. We should yeah. push through yeah. the barriers that are before us and yeah. we should have this mindset to empower ourselves yeah. and speaking of empowering yeah. ourselves mm -hmm. we attended presenter training and you are, we're going to take a short break but before we go to a break you're going to get to see us being empowered in presenter training We are here with Elaine Powell to learn how to be more confident, inspiring communicators. So, you, you will, will be, be the, the judge, judge of that. How we do. My name is Elaine. And when I Googled, Elaine means the light. I know. But I must admit, I changed it years ago to mean child of God. We're tight most, most of the time. Sometimes we have our disagreements. My love and passion, one of them is travel. I'm so fixated with travel. I just love it so much. And I counted the other day and I've been to 52 countries. One of my bucket list is to go to all 199 countries before I die. So I'm actually be like 80. Oh, I'm off to Tibet tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know if I'll get to all 199, but I'm definitely gonna get to 100. So that's me. My name means the one who completes because I was the last born, so I was born to complete my family. After me, my mom says, well, factory closed. My name is Raquel. Now you caught me because years ago, I got to know the meaning of my name, but I kind of forgot. But I, it's something to do with sheep, so I think it's like peaceful as a sheep or something like that. <laughs> so I'm Jessica Ann. 
And like yourself, I also changed my name to be my first and my middle name, and I'll tell you why in my one to two minute story. Um, so my name means gracious gift of God. So I look at that as a powerful, confident messenger who's got a powerful message and is going to create transformation in this world. A couple of years ago, Samantha gave me something with my name on it. I did. And <laughs> if I can I remember if properly, remember. <laughs> if I can remember properly, I think it meant chief or being in charge or something like that. So that's what my name means. <laughs> well, actually, my name's Diana, but I call myself Diana. Many people don't know that my name's Diana, but that's on my birth certificate. <laughs> And it says here that I am, the Latin meaning means divine. She is quiet and caring and can become burdened with other people's problems. Um, I don't know the word burden is, is the right word, but I can become involved in other people's problems and try to help them solve them. So I would say that is a passion of mine, to try and help people solve their problems and to pass my faith to them. Uh, my name is Samantha Dixon and um, I have looked up my name. I, I saw my name as, as, as being a, li a good listener mm -hmm. and I do believe that I am a good listener. Um, a, a, in my character that is one of my, one of my talents. I, I'm very good at listening to people and um, having a lot of empathy for others. Remember when you're speaking it actually is about them. It's not about you and your own internal dialogue. So my number one tip is to forget about you and focus on the audience and just think, how can I make a difference to that person's life? Well, I learned so much and, and I know we all did, but it was very inspiring. Absolutely fabulous. I learned to focus on body language and not have such a military stance. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I learned to be more positive about myself and not to be so hard and insecure it was very helpful for me. I learned to come out of my head when I actually speak and to really realize that speaking is about the audience and not about myself. Mm -hmm. And I know when I speak, I can empower the room. And I learned how to tell a really good story. This program is brought to you by UCKG. This program is brought to you by UCKG. Welcome back. On today's show, The Changing Face of Women, we've been discussing how women are portrayed in the media. And joining us in the studio is singer-songwriter Linda Muriel. Welcome, Linda. Glad to have you on the show. <laughs> Welcome. So, Linda, you were successful in bands like Galliano, Plan B, Incognito, Cotney Pine, the brand new heavies, and James Taylor Quarter from the 80s to the 90s. Now, how differently do you feel the media has portrayed you over the decades? My, well, a lot of the time in my career, I didn't have control, creative control. Mm -hmm. So if I, well, I quite like wearing unusual things. They'd say, no, you know, look a bit sexier. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I used to, well, wear shorter dresses. I was a lot slimmer then, but not too short mm -hmm. because I felt I was doing music because I enjoyed writing and the creativity part of it. Mm -hmm. But it's an industry and mm -hmm. it's business and I was going to say sex sells. Yeah. Not for me, Yeah. but that's the industry. I'd like to ask you something because, you know, did you feel like the pressure, like that is, because that's not what you're wearing now, and I know mm. you said that, oh, you're slimmer than what have you, mm -hmm. but did you feel that because you were in the industry and if you really wanted to be successful, then, oh, let's bring the hemline up, let's show a little bit more of the cleavage. So maybe it wasn't particularly your values or what you thought, but you felt mm. like, oh, I had to, to become that sort of person. Was that the case? Well, what I felt was the industry was quite competitive and mm -hmm. a lot of the girls were... Thin. Mm -hmm. I was slim. I wasn't thin, thin. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't particularly have anything really large on top. Mm -hmm. um, so I wore what I felt suited me. I used to have straight hair back then. My hair was um, mm -hmm. relaxed. Mm -hmm. And I felt I would have been more accepted with my straighter hair mm -hmm. than natural. Mm -hmm. A natural hairstyle. But now it's natural. 
So, you know, our show is all about awareness and mm -hmm. getting women to understand. So would we, we would like you to help us kind of like understand what happens behind the scenes. So um, what, is, what is the sort of control or demand that's made on you as an artist? Uh, what are things that you get um, demanded, that, that you get demanded from you as an artist in order for you to be able to fit in? So that girls kind of who think that, you know, that comes as naturally mm. will understand that it's not actually natural, it's very manipulated. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the time in, this, in the industry, you have to, you have to, you can't be ill. Mm -hmm. And even if you are ill, I mean, I wanted to mention a particular mm -hmm. singer I met um, back in 2010, mm -hmm. Amy Winehouse. And when I saw her, mm -hmm. she was very sick, but yet people still expected her to sing and mm -hmm. look good and perform. And I personally felt that she looked or was too ill to be out there and whoever was looking after her, I felt should have been a bit more responsible mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. her. Um, obviously, it's very tragic what happened to her. Mm -hmm. And a lot of singers have breakdowns. And for instance, um, Donna Summers. Do you remember mm -hmm. Donna Summers? Yeah. I remember her. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. She had a very sexy image and she mm -hmm. actually came from the church mm -hmm. and she had a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. For a lot of the time, we didn't see her. She mm -hmm. had a big, big nervous breakdown mm -hmm. where the demand to be sexy. Do you remember I Feel Love? Yeah. And mm -hmm. what was the other song? Um, oh, was oh, about... oh, God. I forgot the... <laughs> oh, I forgot what it was. Yeah. yeah, but I know the one you're but talking about. But the image always, bad girls, all that sexy thing was mm -hmm. never, ever her. And then she went back to gospel mm -hmm. and then she came out again and she tragically passed away from breast cancer. But um, I think she was an amazing singer. But... When you look at television now, it's not about the singing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not about, it's about the way you look. Right. Mm -hmm. It's about the way you dress. It's about, well, it's, it's very sexualized. Mm -hmm. See, I, I don't really want to knock other women because I'm a woman. Yeah. And I think it's good to be sexy if you want to be, mm -hmm. but to be forced, nearly everyone, yeah. every video you see, Oh, I'll tell a lie, there's a few artists, for instance, India Ari, yeah. mm -hmm. Adele, yeah. mm -hmm. even though when yeah. she first came out, she was quite ordinary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they were trying to yeah. slim her down, right. yeah. make her pout. Obviously, yeah. she's selling records, yeah. so she's got to look presentable. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, but her voice is good, her songs are good. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. one that comes to mind is Jennifer Ernest, Jennifer Hudson. Oh, Hudson. Yeah. Jennifer oh, Hudson. Jennifer Hudson. Hudson. That's, what, that's another one who went through a very radical image change. Oh. And she's got a lot of talent, but you can tell, you can see that talent is not enough to carry you through this industry. So that's something for the girls to think about. Mm -hmm. You know, many times you kind of see this artist on your screen and you, re you really look up to her, but she's not that way naturally. She, it, it, it's a manipulated image and you have to bear that in mind. And not only are they manipulating her, but they're manipulating you as well. Mm -hmm. So you, you're kind of you know, following an image that is not natural. I, 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 I need to say something. You know, can I mention Nina Simone? Please do. Mm -hmm. See, I love Nina Simone. Mm -hmm. I know she's quite controversial, but she went against the industry. Mm -hmm. She dressed how she wanted to dress. She did her hair. She didn't, mm -hmm. at, at the beginning, she had to straighten her hair. In her photographs, she's very light skinned. Mm -hmm. and, and then later on, she cut her hair very short. Yeah. She wore lovely costumes and headdresses and she was accepted. Mm -hmm. But she is one of very few. Most people, for them to have a long career, longevity, mm -hmm. you have to conform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to. Yeah, and th that's something, I mean, we were discussing as well. How can we empower women to stand up? What, what is it, you know, that kind of helped Nina Simone to succeed where others are not? Well, in the industry, it's a male-dominated industry, mm -hmm. and it is. Mm -hmm. I think we need more women. See, like this show? Yeah. <laughs> So Thank you. <laughs> but we need more women to be in power in in the head of companies. A lot of the um, record industry is male dominated. Mm -hmm. The TV networks, the newspaper, everything mm -hmm. that portrays people, um, you know, visually, mm -hmm. is a male dominant. We need more women. Mm -hmm. We need more women to get together and form production companies, mm -hmm. um, music, film. You know, magazines even. Yeah. 
you know. I, I mean, to be quite honest, I've never been on a show mm-hmm. where it's been all women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's always well, had a man nice. somewhere yeah, on the yeah. show. Yeah. And so this is like a breath of fresh air, mm-hmm. really. And we all look different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know. Every that's answer. something that's something definitely about our show is we mm. try to empower women to be themselves and mm. not conform to you know what what society says a woman should be or the media says a woman should be and so mm. thank you for noticing <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to ask you Linda because yeah like you said um, even on the news you know you've got the male newscaster and the female it's quite different. Mm. what what exactly would you like to see in terms of the media, how would you want them to portray women, you know, in, in your ideal mindset? I personally feel if you want people to take you seriously, you want to be respected in, in business, you can't come with your chest and bottom hanging out, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. You can dress a certain way if you're a performer, you know, on stage, but there has to be... We had Mary Whitehouse. Do you remember, I don't know if any yeah. of you heard of yeah. her. She used to watch programmes and decide, no, this is not right and this is, you know, watershed time. Yes. Another thing, when you watch the news, mm-hmm. um, Trevor MacDonald was there for how many years? But Angela Rippon... Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's the other girl, a woman? Yeah. Um, oh, God. I'm trying to think of all the names. When, when women get to a certain age... Yeah. A yeah, younger yeah. one comes yeah. along. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we accept it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Why do we accept it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, go on. That, that, that's food for thought because mm. that's what we were discussing on the show. Normally, um, you know, we've, we've, we get faced with hopelessness and we, it tends to paralyze us. Mm. So we forget the power that we have to not accept things. Mm. We kind of uh, look at it and inside of us we cringe, but we don't do anything about it because we find ourselves hopeless before a situation. Mm. But I think that's not going to change. If we continue having that mentality of hopelessness, it's not going to change. So we need to kind of start thinking, how can we actively get involved to change this? And how can we not accept? Uh, you know, for example, you were saying young girls who dance to these lyric mm. lyrics that are degrading mm. that's that's where you start you mm. stop buying those records and things like that so we need to recognize the power we have but then the videos um there's a particular singer whose father is a famous country and western singer her mm-hmm. name is i can't say she was swinging on a ball in a video mm-hmm. i think she was actually naked yeah mm-hmm. yeah and I know who you're talking about. We all know who you're talking about. <laughs> we will now, not mention her, but we have... That, that was beyond sexy. She yeah. was naked. And yeah. my mum, was. we were watching telly, we were sitting there, and I thought, let's, let's see what mum... She said, that girl's naked. Yeah. She yeah. said, is that, is that music now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I said, mum, that's what sells. Yeah. And so I said, if that was how it was when I started music, I wouldn't have been a musician. I would have been anything else but... A musician. Um, I couldn't have done it. No yeah. way. Yeah. Unfortunately, we've run out of time for our oh. section. <laughs> and the conversation is really flowing so well. Yeah. Thank you, Linda. Your, your insight has really helped Thank us. You. And, you know, your contribution you. to the show has been phenomenal. Thank you Thank so you much so for, much. for becoming you. part of our show. <laughs> I wanted to mention female yeah. producers. And, go on, yeah. go on. Well, mm-hmm. I've written a few names down. Um, yeah. I know it's cheating. But um, Sylvia Robinson is, mm-hmm. uh, was, they call her the mother of hip hop. Mm-hmm. And she actually produced for, um, do you remember a, a track by Grandmaster Flash called, the, and the Furious Five called The Message? Mm-hmm. And Rapper's Delight, I don't know if any of you lot remember no. that. No, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. And Melly Mel, there's quite a few, Linda Parry who did, Gret Stefani, Courtney Love, Britney Spears, there's quite a few, female producers, Missy Elliott, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that we, it's, it's not as commonplace, everyone knows Pharrell, they yeah. know all the, yeah. Yeah. the women, the male we, and we accept it, we think, oh, well, we've got something there, yeah. you know, our name's there somewhere, we need to start saying, no, we want our name here, yeah. we want to see more directors, producers, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, people. Decision makers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And we women need to support other women. Right. So get mm, behind exactly. those producers. <laughs> buy their records. And, and one other thing, women change. can look exactly. nice yeah. and do a good job. Yeah. 
I mean, and, and another thing in the industry, if you're a strong woman, they call you the B word. Yeah. yeah and yeah, men yeah. are assertive. Yeah. 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 And women are aggressive. aggressive. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you, you know what? When we come back, <laughs> we're going to break and we're going to do this <laughs> but before we continue with our discussion, let's go for a break. This program is brought to you by UCKG. This program is brought to you by UCKG. Welcome back. I'm celebrity stylist and image consultant, Jessica Ann. It is important to think of how you represent yourself. So today I would love to share my top five style tips on how to create a more positive image by discovering your personal style. Personal style is about being unique and expressing the person you are. Style is when a woman looks in harmony with her inner self and dresses appropriate for the occasion. Tip number one, how would you like to feel? As you get dressed each day, do make a note of how certain clothing items make you feel. Do they allow you to make you feel the best version about yourself? Tip number two, who do you want to be? Every day, your image has the power to change the world. How you look affects how you feel. Therefore, each day you have a chance to decide who you want to be. This is a tip to keep in mind when you're shopping for pieces to build your personal and professional wardrobe. Tip number three, dress for your shape. When you are able to identify your body shape, it'll become a lot easier to dress for yourself and know what styles of clothing work best for your figure and how you would like your body to look. Tip number four, create a capsule wardrobe and be brave enough to stand out in the crowd. A capsule wardrobe is 10 to 15 items that are suited to your lifestyle and your personality that you can mix and match to create different looks. So first identify what pieces you like the most, then you can start to build a core wardrobe around the pieces you love. Tip number five, stop worrying about what other people's opinions are. Are you changing your style to match fashion trends projected in the media or what other people like? It'll be a lot easier to identify your personal style when you start to notice what it is that you like and how your style makes you feel. Your style is an expression of who you are. So do learn to wear what makes you feel good and makes you feel your best each and every single day. Well, these are my style tips for this week and I hope you'll be media savvy in your look from now on, ladies. Thank you, Jessica. And I agree, what you wear is an expression of yourself, not some famous reality TV persona. So don't follow, don't follow what's out there. Decide for yourself what to wear. I like that. Mm. Yeah, so now, you know, before the break, Linda left us with a very thought-provoking um, argument. And I want us to kind of talk about it because normally when we think about how women are portrayed and we see, for example, we were talking about the evolution of the portrayal of women in media and in TV. Uh, when you look at, you know, leading roles, women in leading roles back then, the only one that comes to mind really is, is Jessica Fletcher. <laughs> Murder, she wrote. It's the only show that I can remember having a woman in the leading yeah. role. And when you look at her and the sweet little lady she was, mm. and you look at how women are portrayed nowadays as very influential, which we like. We yeah. have, you know, scandal. We have how, how to get, get away with murder. murder. Mm. We have the, um, the, good, the good wife. And we have Madam Secretary. So we see women have kind of evolved to influential positions. But all these women in influential positions all have one thing in common. Mm. 
I'm sure you can all guess mm. <laughs> how they are portrayed. Is they're not really very nice women. They kind yeah. of it, 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 it kind of sends a message that in order for you to be influential and to be in a position of power as a woman, you have to be. You know, I don't want to say the word. You know, very you catty. know, you have to be like this this yeah. cruel woman in yeah. a sense. Yeah, and and you know, I find that because a lot of the time you do see that women and even we as women were guilty of it you know mm -hmm. like Linda said you will say oh she's so this and she's so that and you know you find like for example just to take one of them you know Olivia Pope she's very famous she's she's very powerful she seems that she dresses well she seems to be at the front of her game but how does she get there by being backhanded by being arrogant by putting other women in her team down mm -hmm. so you you kind of get that message like you know what if I want to be powerful successful and get to the top of my game other women need to be behind me we can't work together as women yeah. and I need to be like this I yeah. need to be aggressive and I need to be strong and I, you almost need to be like a man to get to the top yeah. and that's what it, it's showing and I find it interesting because something Raquel said which I thought was really really important is she's working with a group that is working with young women to try to help them to to say like look you know what you don't have to be like those singers and song artists the values of old, they're still really relevant today. Mm -hmm. And you can value yourself. You can dress properly and still get ahead. Mm -hmm. And I think we need more groups like that and more women who are prepared to do work like that mm -hmm. to make a change. I think we can, we can um, since a very young age, we can, let's say, set them free from, you right. know, this pressure. Because mm -hmm. women already have the tendency to look for others to follow up, to look yeah. up to. So since a very young age, if we already open their mind and you know, let them understand that they are special in the way they are, mm -hmm. you know, they don't need to wear, let's say, sometimes we see little girls like eight, nine, and they want to wear high heels, mm -hmm. and they want to put a very strong makeup, because that's how they they consider, you mm -hmm. know, um, special or good, so mm -hmm. when we tell them, look, you are beautiful in the way you are, you don't need to jump this time of your life, you don't need to look up to someone, sometimes they look up to a girl, or let's say a adult or 20 something and they they just see the good side that media portrays but sometimes they don't know what's behind their struggles the pressure that mm -hmm. they are going through as well so yeah. i think it's very important to educate them since a very young age Certainly when you when you talk about it we can tell that you're very passionate about <laughs> yeah. it your passion it's comes so nice. through but you know <laughs> in order for us to set them free i think we need to start by setting ourselves free so if we yeah. if we're gonna teach our children to be free thinkers and to be kind of um not influenced by the media we it needs to start with us we can't be people who are influenced by the media and what you mentioned and what linda mentions is a lot of women are the ones who actually per, uh, perpetuate these stereotypes mm, mm. so it means that women are becoming influenced yeah. by what they see yeah it's becoming part of their their way of thinking it's becoming part of their mentality so we as adults mm. need to set ourselves free mm -hmm. so that we can then be good role models for mm -hmm. the children we raise right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. so we've said a lot on this show but <laughs> i'm sure you have something to conclude what is your last word for those who are watching us Anyone. Mine would be just um, to not be afraid to go against the grain. If you think about people in history, male or female, those who really made a difference and stood out, it was because they stood for what they believed in and mm -hmm. they weren't afraid to go against the grain. And sometimes in life we're faced with that dilemma and we think, you know what, I just want to follow the masses. But those people never made a difference. And we as women, if we keep standing up for what we believe in and for our values, then we can cause the change that we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to add on to Gemma, um, I really think as well to have to be strong-minded because there's going to be so many times that you there'll be you'll be pressured to to sort of give up on what you believe. So you really have to be strong-minded and persevere and always remember what you're standing for and the result that's going to come out of it because many of these people that did make a difference, they did have setbacks, they, they were tempted to just think and felt like it's not going to work, but they were strong-minded about it and they knew what they believed and they stuck to it until they saw it through. Yeah, yeah I, I think talking about media as well, I know that we see many... Um, TV shows and many other ways of media that portrays women in a negative way. But also, you know, we can also see people who are women, especially who are fighting to show, you know, women are 
much more than this you know they don't need to sexualize they don't need so it's not only about the negative side we see in media we can also look up to those who mm -hmm. are fighting to show that women are more than that yeah definitely okay. like yeah. Um, like linda mentioned we have a lot of uh, producers and people who are bringing good content yeah. who are female who are bringing a female perspective yeah. to the industry and these are people that we as women need to back up right yeah. mm. um And I think for me, you know, we, we speak about wanting change. And for me, change comes when we make ourselves responsible for that change. Mm. So we have to make ourselves responsible. We can't play the victim. We can't just keep pointing fingers and keep pointing out what's going wrong and just sit, sit, sit back and expect it to change. It's not going to change. Change happens when we do something in our world that's going to affect that change. So in, in your world, what can you do? For example, not buy certain records, hello, you know, not, 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 not support certain shows. Oh, but I, you know, I, I want to fit in with everybody. That's, that, that's where the problem starts uh -huh. because you are not making yourself responsible for the change you want to see. You are supporting what's wrong, but expecting it to miraculously go away. It won't, it starts with you. Okay, so that's my conclusion. And you've heard so much from our opinion on today's show. We definitely shared a lot of opinions with you. And now we want to hear from you. So it's your turn to tell us what you think. Leave us your comments on Facebook, on Twitter, or by emailing us at comments at dkw.me or help at dkw.me. And that's it for today. Join us next week for another exciting episode of A Different Kind of Woman. And until then, it's goodbye. This program is brought to you by UCKG.